Good morning, dear friends and colleagues. I would like to mention that you are uh, an honor for everyone. We are proud to have you all today. I would like to mention that you can follow us on Twitter on the account of UFM Secretariat. I will be presenting three speakers today and following this discussion, we will have 10 minutes for questions and answers. I am pleased to facilitate this roundtable. I am honored to represent the Arab Association of Arab Women. We are a member of the International Federation of the Protection of Nature. I am honored to be in this high-level conference on the occasion of the 25th anniversary of the Barcelona process for cooperation and dialogue in between different countries and cities on the Mediterranean coast. I am also happy to be present with many regional and national representatives. Today we will be discussing the impact of COVID-19 on women and on girls. My name is Nawal Haddadin. I am in charge of the political empowerment program as well as women leadership program in the Arab Association for Women in Jordan. I am also the secretary general of my organization. I am pleased today to represent my organization and I am happy to respond to this invitation addressed to us by the Union for Mediterranean. As you might know, my country, Jordan, is also right now uh, a member of the Union for the Mediterranean. The city of Barcelona is also one of the most popular cities for the Arab countries. I am happy that Barcelona is hosting this uh, conference for women. This is why we need to highlight the importance of rebuilding our communities in the post-COVID era so that this would become a place for more gender equality for women and girls. Allow me first to discuss our local context in Jordan. The spread of COVID-19 has led to many structural changes in the daily lives of everyone. Millions of people are no longer working as a result of this pandemic or they are now working remotely from home. Many events have been canceled and we have seen constraints on movement. This is why the daily workers have lost their daily livelihood. Children can no longer attend school. They can no longer attend nurseries in multiple places. Undoubtedly, this had a ne negative impact on women as a whole. And we can definitely say that the impact on women has been far more than the impact on men because women are in charge of providing care for children and uh, for other relatives and family members. Women are on the front line of providing uh, child care and medical care. It is also essential to note that women have an important role in community. We need to mention that the percentage of women in the labor market and the medical services as well as social services sector accounts to 70% approximately uh, around the world. We have seen more pressure on the shoulders of women, especially in particular to domestic chores and unpaid care with the closure of schools and nurseries and with the uh, increasing rates of infections. Women are now exerting uh, unpaid efforts that are three times more of the efforts deployed by men around the world especially now that we have seen this major shift, shift to remote work. Now women have additional uh, responsibilities to shoulder, such as assisting their children in their homeschooling duties, in a, as well as their uh, current uh, work functions and domestic chores. Uh, families, women and children are no more, more vulnerable to Same. violence. Same. Not all the houses are safe. Same. 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 We have eh, seen an iPhone de Charlotte, which is like this person that came to enter. No, that name I don't connect. Tampoco en, en línea. Nos faltan las. We have seen increasing cases of uh, violence. 
It is also worth mentioning that women are more likely to be impacted by the economic impact of uh, COVID-19. And women account more to the percentage of people working in unsafe sectors. This can have an impact on the possibility of women uh, to, to actually work and provide uh, livelihoods and incomes for their own families. Many policies, many COVID-19 policies have failed from actually benefiting the experience of women in leadership and in peace building. Despite the fact that women have a lot of experience in ensuring social recovery as well as political and economic recovery. In Jordan, for instance, there are more than 1 million Syrian refugees as a result of the Syrian crisis. The COVID-19 pandemic has also impacted negatively the flow of humanitarian assistance. This is why we have noticed more pressure and more threats against women and children because of the closures which had prevented the flow of humanitarian assistance as well as uh, an increasing impact on women uh, survivors of domestic violence. In addition to that, salaries have been halved in the private sector. There were no social protection measures provided to people working in the informal sector where women account to 48%. Based on the aforementioned challenges, I would like to present the following recommendations as possible solutions to rise up to these challenges. First, we call upon the different governments in order to immediately st stop and put an end to discrimination against women. It is essential to integrate the essential roles of women in uh, dealing with this current crisis and providing uh, ur urgent assistance for women from all age categories, as well as ensuring different types of social services and social protection measures. Second, in light of the decreasing participation of women in the labor market, which accounts to around 14%, it is quite obvious that the losses of jobs would be double the job losses as compared to men. In fact, the informal sector might be the most vulnerable sector to uh, losses. Third, refugees and migrant workers would also be impacted as a result of the lack of medical services as well as limited social protection measures. As a result of these elements, the, these categories would be more impacted. That is why we are required to provide urgent measures to protect these marginalized categories. Fourth, as a result of the important role to be played by feminist organizations and civil society organizations and providing directed assistance to women in vulnerable settings, it is essential to provide support to these organizations as well as to relieve them from the existing pressures. Allow me now to welcome my dear colleagues and friends taking part in this uh, event. We will have with us women with political responsibilities at the local as well as regional levels. And this is an opportunity for all of us to share our experiences. My colleagues will try to present how their participation is essential in order to make enlightened decisions with just results in order to reach policies and objectives that would enhance the importance of gender equality. Allow me to open the floor now for discussions with the different speakers pre present with us. I would like to invite you to share with us a few numbers, a few facts, and a few challenges so that you can clarify more your situation. I also kindly ask you to provide us with your recommendations or solutions to rise up to these challenges. 
I would like to mention that every speaker has six minutes. I kindly ask you in your intervention to also answer the common question, which is the following. How can gender equality or gender mainstreaming lead to sustainable development or enhance sustainable development in cities and regions? After answering this question, I might also raise additional questions for every participant based on the role or function you undertake. The audience can also send their questions and comments through the chat box, and we will be discussing these questions with the panelists at the end of this roundtable. Allow me to start, to start first and foremost with the first speaker, Mrs. Naya Hanid. She is the Vice President of the Barcelona Municipality. I would like to raise the following question to be answered by you in addition to the common question. To what extent to what extent will the women participation and local governance ensure a better, a, a better sustainability and more preparedness to rise up to the challenges after COVID-19? The floor is yours. Good day, everybody. It is a pleasure to be with you all. It is a pleasure to be here, participating in this uh, panel of women, concentrating on the situation and the potential role of the Mediterranean women in the face of a number of uh, challenges in the region. But we were asked to uh, speak particularly about the question. I am a member of the uh, city council uh, management team and uh, I'm responsible of international relations and uh, digital uh, transition uh, among other responsibilities. And uh, this is why I'm here in a sense. But going back to the question you were asking, Allow me to say that, uh, well, we all know already that we are going through a very difficult period. The pandemic has made very evident that uh, the system uh, uh, has structural inequalities that continue to be uh, there. It is a system that exploits the uh, planet, uh, acting as if uh, we had endless resources, a uh, system that um, puts uh, the private interest before the collective interest without recognizing the importance of the uh, care economy, which uh, feminine, uh, with a very feminine note in, in that economy within our uh, communities. And the transformation of that model is unavoidable and very urgent. We must uh, tackle these fundamental inequalities in the care system. Um, I talk about care in the broadest sense, uh, the lockdown measures have put the uh, assistance, the assistance services at the forefront. Uh, the cashiers in the supermarkets, social workers, uh, healthcare providers are at the forefront. They are absolutely necessary for the well-being of all our society, and often they are overlooked and not. Uh, sufficiently valued in economic terms. If we consider that these are the essential workers, we realize that they are in many cases women. The ones who look after uh, the uh, weaker uh, citizens are often women. It must be said very clearly, the time has come to uh, really bring equality to urban planning, to municipal services and to legislation at large. Uh, uh, three out of five women around the world are victims of violence, and the pandemic has exacerbated this problem for many women. Um, it is of the essence to uh, fight gender violence, to protect women around the world and guarantee their access to services and care. But that's not all. We must also uh, bring new value to the non-paid work by, carried out by women in social and economic terms. This care work is absolutely necessary and contributes essentially to our economy. Uh, 
we must plan our cities in a way that they work for all groups, not only for white middle class men. It must be said as clearly as this, we must also work uh, to uh, achieve a production and consumption and care model that puts people at the center and public services at the forefront. It is also essential to take measures to reinforce the autonomy of girls and women in uh, the whole Mediterranean and also to implement governance models that value the uh, contribution of women in the society, in the technological sectors, in government, in the private sector, in the public sector. We also uh, live in a very complex context in the Mediterranean in uh, geographical terms with tremendous structural inequalities also. And uh, uh, it's probably one of the areas of the world with the greatest inequalities with a particular impact uh, on uh, all issues related to climate change more than in other parts of the planet. And so there are geopolitical considerations that destabilize the, reg the region on top of all these other issues. In uh, 1995, 25 years ago, the Barcelona process was launched with the objective to create a prosperity and peace space for sharing in the Mediterranean. And today the situation is no longer the same. Conflicts are on the rise. The sea we all uh, share is the scenery of a tremendous a human crisis and the feminization of politics will be key to uh, tackle all these challenges. In this sense, the regional and local assemblies of uh, the Euro Mediterranean uh, that I belong to representing the uh, territorial uh, voice of my region has already uh, put forward recommendations to member states enabling uh, regions and cities express their uh, position in favor of equality of gender, political mentoring, and favoring uh, female candidates. The number of uh, women in politics is still very scarce. Uh, and this illustrates the situation of women in the region. Uh, we uh, must work with data also that's uh, reliable with regards to the equality of uh, women in all areas of the Mediterranean. This is why uh, we are happy to launch a ministerial uh, monitoring mechanism for all the indicators uh, for the situation of women implemented this year, which is going to allow us to uh, measure and monitor in the future the progress we make in the equality of gender in the region and also to provide recommendations with regards to uh, action and political access for women. Um, we uh, know that the Union for the Mediterranean is always a very good uh, framework to promote all these initiatives in the uh, region, and we must make the most of it to analyze the situation and find sure solutions for the region. Uh, for years now, the uh, north and the south banks of the uh, Mediterranean have uh, collaborated and exchanged solutions. And uh, the southern European cities put forward solutions that they want to share. The local uh, sphere can be a place to find solutions and to enhance multilateral cooperation. I think we can also happily say that we have established a roadmap uh, an agenda after Barcelona that is uh, really enhancing the municipality power to tackle all these issues. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mrs. Laya. If you were asked to send a message to the women of the world, what would that message be? Stay as active as possible. We're half of the planet's population and we must be part of the decision-making process. Yes, we must be there. I think we are we must not wait 
until somebody gives us the right to, you know, uh, take part in the decisions. We just have to take that right and be there. Thank you. Allow me now to give the floor to Mrs. Samia. Vice Mayor of Marseille, in charge of European relations, European Mediterranean relations. In your intervention, I would kindly ask you to answer the same two questions previously asked, and I would like to remind you. First, how can gender equality lead to sustainable development or enhance sustainable development in cities and regions? And my second question is the following. To what extent can the increasing participation of women in local governance would lead to better preparedness and more sustainability in rising up to the challenges in the post-COVID-19 area? The floor is yours. I'm afraid I can't show my uh, video image. I'm so sorry about that. Can you hear me okay? Can you hear me okay? Could you please confirm you can hear me? You can hear me. Oh, brilliant. Good day, everybody. It is a pleasure. I'm in the car because I was visiting a, a female association that works in uh, aid with food for people in uh, dire situations with families uh, under-resourced uh, here in Marseille. It is a pleasure to be here with you and to share this moment with you and to share uh, also uh, as uh, um, um, representing the newly elected uh, mayor of the city, the view and the vision of a female in a city such as Marseille, one of the big cities in France. And as you know, in France today, big cities um, have quite a few women uh, heading at the helm. In, and it is Obviously, the place of women, of course, in the Mediterranean, Marseille, Paris, uh, Barcelona, Tunis, wherever, it is important that women are uh, leading because women in moments of crisis, such as like COVID, are leading and leading well. And, uh, and as uh, Maya already said, it is important, uh, as he said, that it's important to work in essential activities, and that important work is carried out by women. It's so important for our economies, and sometimes we uh, don't see this work being uh, done. Uh, also, with the schools being closed, or a lot of women working in education, in supermarkets, uh, more, many of them are uh, nurses or care workers or domestic workers. All these activities are essential for the life and the economy of countries to allow countries to really uh, stay uh, afloat during crisis. Uh, but they are uh, undervalued and, uh, and under-remunerated. Of course, this is uh, a national flow, an international flow. Uh, increasingly, women now are single parents and have to take on the whole family situation uh, alone, educating the children in uh, situations that are not always easy. And despite all this, they are strong and they move forward uh, relentlessly in Marseille. Uh, unfortunately, we have poverty issues, problems with uh, people uh, who uh, don't have a place to stay and who have no resources. And uh, we uh, see not only the healthcare crisis, but this comes on top of all the uh, crises, such as the housing crisis. So in Marseille, and representing the City Council of Marseille, we know that uh, we will always uh, be at the side of those who want to move forward in fighting all these problems, and we want to work together with Barcelona, of course. Uh, we are new, we have been newly elected, but uh, there is this willing, uh, willingness to work together.
Thank you very much for this intervention. Allow me to give the floor now to my friend Suad Abdul Rahim from Tunisia. Mrs. Suad, in addition to answering the common question, I kindly ask you to answer the following question. What are the lessons that you have learned and what are the opportunities that we can also tap into in this period of time uh, in discussing uh, the importance of the participation of women in decision making? Thank you and good morning, everyone. I am Saad Abdurrahim, in charge of the elderly and women in the municipality of Tunisia. I am representing uh, the Mayor Saad Abdurrahim in this event. Allow me first and foremost to express my deepest thanks to the organizers of this event for inviting us to attend. I thank you for this initiative, which enables us today to discuss women entrepreneurship in light of uh, the COVID-19 pandemic. As you all know, the world has been witnessing for many months now a pandemic and we have seen a war waged against this virus. We have seen from previous wars that when men are in the battlefield, women would be qualified to be in charge of the daily lives of everyone. In fact, during war times, women have always played an important role. Women were in charge of running uh, factories, administrations, hospitals. However, at the end of wars, the men would come back to become the leaders once again, and women would go back to their traditional roles. However, our war today is a different war as compared to the previous traditional ones. In fact, women are essential stakeholders and women are waging this war just like men are. So the question is, can we hope that this current crisis might change the situation in the future? Can this guarantee more gender equality in the future? Can this be an opportunity as compared to the previous wars? Allow me to share here our experience at the level of the uh, Tunis uh, municipality. Ever since this crisis started, we have seen many uh, female councillors. The numbers of female councillors and advisors was far more, far more bigger than the numbers of male advisors. We have also seen more women taking part in the different uh, emergency units established by our municipality in order to respond to the uh, requirements and needs of the citizens in order to provide better services. So women accounted uh, to more people actually working at these two levels. In my uh, municipality, we have seen women actually working more uh, more than men in these different uh, spheres. Women are always at the forefront, especially whenever we have noticed difficult situations and difficult circumstances. Women are volunteers in disinfecting activities as well. This is proof that the Tunisian women have been present in all fields of work. As you might know, unfortunately, when we when we work more and when when we work more we might be criticized more unfortunately that is the truth this is why i would like to pay tribute to the women of my country who have been an integral part of building the modern states of tunisia starting from uh, all the women who have stood up to dictatorship and who also contributed in enshrining the values of the second republic of uh, democratic tunisia which is a successful proof of uh, one of the successful revolutions of the Arab Spring. Allow me as well to talk about uh, the municipal elections. As you know, the municipal elections are essential and in Tunisia we have proven that we can put an end to the past by by electing a woman to head the municipality of Tunis. This is the first time in our history where we see a woman becoming a leader for the municipality of the capital. 
this is definitely a positive indicator of more trust in female governance. And this is also a translation of our will to change. In this framework, I would like to highlight the different achievements that we have uh, achieved as part of uh, our municipal council. Uh, first and foremost, I would like to focus that we have adopted horizontal and vertical equality in the uh, voting polls, and this has ensured more participation of women in the municipal council. This has also guaranteed more participation for the youth. Ever since I became a member of the uh, of the council, and since uh, the mayor has become the head of this municipality of the capital, she has adopted many policies and strategies in order to achieve uh, objectives and goals. The mayor highlighted the importance of the work at the level of the council, regardless of political affiliations and regard regardless of any differences amongst the members. This is why the tasks have been uh, divided over the different parties represented in the council. Even though the law provides the mayor the full capacity and the full ability to appoint uh, anyone uh, the mayor deems suitable. However, the mayor chose seven uh, heads of, uh, of units from her own party and she distributed the eight remaining positions for the, the remaining parties. It was also essential to have women as part of the different uh, committees. We have 11 municipal uh, committees headed by women, as well as 16 other uh, committees with women participation. In all of these participations, there was a uh, rotation and uh, there was gender equality ensured for everyone. The most important uh, committee perhaps might be the Committee for Gender Equality and Gender Mainstreaming. This committee has suggested that the 25th April of every year shall be declared a day for gender equality. Women have shown that they are an integral part of having an impact and rising up to the challenges in these difficult times. This is why it is essential to talk about the important role of women in politics at the national and uh, regional levels. Today, since all our cities are facing this uh, medical, uh, medical crisis, So women were able to play a crucial role uh, during difficult circumstances, and that is at the local and uh, national level. Now that our cities suffer from the health pandemic repercussions with social and economic consequences, decision makers must be wise and must have uh, self-control and restraint in order to uh, show the partners and stakeholders that they can do better and get encouraged that they can cooperate. Such a, a course of action cannot succeed in a patriarchal mindset. So allow me here to say that we women are able to become actors while ensuring a balance between the personal life and the political commitments in a way that would ensure the provision of the best possible services to our communities while relying on our qualities and uh, the adaptation capacity. Uh, 
as well as the capacity of identifying lessons learned in a quick manner. Before I conclude, I insist on the importance of uh, tolerance and respect to others while acknowledging differences in the racial sexual and other considerations because respect of others is a civilizational attribute that would ensure solidarity and enable us to face all forms of violence. As already mentioned, the change can never uh, be achieved unless uh, legal conventions are ratified and implemented. With that, we need to change the mindset. That is why we say that Again, this cannot happen by only ratifying conventions. We need to work on changing with the mindset. That's why in Tunisia, we have a strategic uh, platform to ensure daily changes in our educational and social endeavors. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Mrs. Suad. Now we we'll listen to Mrs. Elizabeth the Foreign Affairs uh, Labour Minister. Mrs. Elizabeth, I'd like to ask you to answer the general question in addition to the following question. What are the actions that the governments must uh, take in order to ensure women participation and women leadership and decision-making positions of a senior level. Thank you, the floor is yours, ma'am. Thank you, uh, Mrs. Uh, Hadadan. Uh, let me begin by saying that it's a pleasure to share this session with such uh, wonderful panelists. So let me go straight to the point. To achieve a sustainable future, we need a feminist revolution in foreign affairs. This is clear. And this is something that concerns all women, whichever side of the Mediterranean they live in. Just to take an example, only 13 to 15 of entrepreneurial businesses in the Middle East and North Africa are led by women. These figures may improve or even double when looking at the situation in the rest of the world, but they are still far from the 50% of the population that we represent. This is why the government of Catalonia has adopted our Mediterranean strategy 2030, which includes, as one of its goals, the promotion of entrepreneurship among women through your Mediterranean networks. It is just an example of a strategy that puts women at the center of all the policies by making gender perspective the golden thread running through all the action plans and the specific initiatives stemming from or required to the implementation of the strategy. Indeed, as I said, we are determined to put women at the center of our external action. Many believe that this is something that should be confined, if at all present, to the development cooperation side of foreign affairs. Well, that makes no sense. There might be significant differences between the so-called North and South as regards the situation of women. Some challenges might, might be felt more acutely in the global South, such as the lack of women's representation in public institutions, which hardly achieves 26% in North Africa and Middle Eastern countries, not to mention female genital mutilation, arranged marriages, or the use of rape in armed conflicts as a tool of, for spreading terror. There is no shortage of reasons to call for a revolution against a male-dominated system that refuses to stand for us. And most of this, as most of the challenges women must endure on a daily basis are, to an important degree, shared by all women. Blood and inequalities, wage discrimination, unequal access to employment, to name but a few, are not limited to any specific part of the world. More growing, uh, worryingly, we are witnessing a regression of women's rights where we least expected it. Take, for instance, the case of Poland, where women still have to fight for their sexual and reproductive rights, while all across Europe hate speech against women and feminist movements from ultra-conservative and populist parties increase year after year. Even here in Catalonia, where statistics tell us that two out of every three women have or will suffer from gender-based violence in the course of their lives, polls suggest that the populist far right is likely to enter the parliament in the next elections. In 2018, sorority was the neologism of the year here in Catalonia. 
it opened our eyes and made us see that we are not alone. In fact, we are a vast majority. And if we are united, we can prepare ourselves, lead and transform the societies we live in. To achieve that, we will need the collaboration of all women with public responsibilities, be it in governments, institutions, NGOs, and civil society, and also of men. At the Catalan Ministry for Foreign Affairs, we've worked with the Catalan Women's Institute to take their experience in designing and implementing public policies on gender equality in Catalonia and to incorporate them in our work abroad, supporting projects across the Mediterranean, cooperating with Catalan NGOs on the field and accompanying women's movements and organizations. This is the approach that guided the drafting of our Mediterranean Strategy 2030 and what inspires our projects, promoting sexual and reproductive rights in Gaza, widening opportunities for employment and participation of women in Nablus and in Bosnia and Herzegovina, preventing gender-based violence in Sarajevo, Hebron, Libya or Tangier, or the project on gender equality, infant protection and disaster prevention we launched in Palestine just before the COVID-19 pandemic. The government of Catalonia is committed to keep fostering gender equality both through our domestic policies here in Catalonia, but also abroad through our external action. Not just because it's fair or it's what needs to be done, but because it's the smart thing to do as well. According to OECD reports, GDP would rise by 25% in the Middle East and North Africa region and 10% in the EU if women were more empowered. In the wake of the social and economic crisis caused by the pandemic, it seems at the very least, reasonable to put gender equality and women empowerment at the center of our policies. We want and we will go deeper in transforming our external action into a feminist external action, following the lead of countries like Sweden, as well as the expectations of our own society. We can't wait to make this change happen. As the activists for civil rights, Maya Anglu said once, stepping onto a brand new path is difficult, but no more difficult than remaining in a situation which is not nurturing to the whole women. Thank you for your attention. I'm afraid I cannot hear you. <laughs> We are not on our own. We can actually go beyond any obstacles and convictions. I would like to thank all of the participants. We really benefited from all of your interventions and insightful inputs. Now I have a question to Mrs. Elizabeth. How can women leaders take part in the uh, gender-based violence combating campaigns? For example, the number of uh, ministers and first ladies, uh, female entrepreneurs and uh, female uh, media anchors, for example. And this question is asked by one of the participants. It's a, it's a very good question. And I think it's at the heart of, the, of the, my intervention that I made. We need more women to, step, to make a step forward, to get involved in politics, uh, in, uh, in uh, entrepreneurs. Uh, we, need, we need to be more, but we need to put the conditions as well to allow women to make those steps forward. Right now, uh, th there are not the conditions uh, available in many places, unfortunately. There are not the public policies in place uh, to make this change happen, the conditions to make uh, this change happen. 
And this is what we have to put all the emphasis as well. I mean, um, if we want more women in politics, if we want more women leading enterprises, we need to change how we see the role of women in society and also of men in society. And this is not done uh, in one day or two. It needs, it needs a social and cultural change. We need to start by putting uh, the policies in place to make this, thing, this, this change happen. It's not easy, but we need, it's the only way forward. We represent more than 50% of the population in this world. So this 50% should be represented in institutions, in politics, in uh, businesses, everywhere where there is a, repre a representation because we need over voice, the voice of women be heard. I'd like to thank all of the participants. We've really enjoyed uh, uh, listening to you and uh, to your uh, useful uh, contributions. Thank you.